Hey guys, it's Melvin7 here. Sorry I haven't been uploading too much. I think what I'm going to do with my channel, it's going to be 90% football orientated and about 10% FIFA orientated just because, I don't know, I've, I've lost my enthusiasm for FIFA. I still play it, but like just, I don't know, making videos, like the, the views are obviously stagnating and stuff like that. And football videos, whenever I upload them, seem to get four or five times the amount of views. So screw it, I'm going to make it a football channel with slight FIFA. Anyway, last season I did a transfer roundup and a transfer rumour series. And I think in total I did 50, 60 episodes and they were very, very successful. So I thought, why not do that now? And I'll merge the two. Roundup was basically all the confirmed deals and rumours was obviously all the rumours. I'm just going to do them all into one video, so it's rumours slash roundup. This is episode one. So, obviously the main confirmed deals that everyone already knows, because they happened ages ago, is uh, Granite Xhaka to Arsenal. A CDM, which they finally got, which is a typical Wenger buy. He's um kind of a, what you would call a, a pretty footballer, like a signing like Giroud, that Arsenal seem to sign all the time. But... He, he fits their bill, and I mean, he, he's kind of a more defensive uh, version of Santi Cozzola. You could probably say he's a very good passer of the ball, and he's slightly more defensive. Now, is it the, the signing that they probably needed? I mean, I would have been more fearful as a rival uh, if they'd signed N'Galo Kante, because I think he is what they need. He's like a, a young version of Makaleli. Like, really, he, he's a solid workhorse in the midfield. He, he goes from box to box. And I think that would have been the perfect signing. But they've got this Jacko guy, obviously they've scouted him. I don't know a great deal about him, but he's young. And if Wenger thinks he's good enough, then we'll see what happens in the Premier League next season. The next one is another midfielder, Ike Gundogan, who's went to Man City. And uh, this was kind of expected. Now, he's a terrific player and there's also rumours of Laporte following him soon enough. Both of these players, obviously Gundogan's confirmed, Laporte not yet. Both of these players are highly error prone, uh, error prone, sorry, injury prone, and they're both injured right now. They are terrific players on their day, but City have some injury problems in the team already. Sergio Aguero, Vincent Company, they get injured quite a lot during the season, so it's a little bit of a risk. It's a risk probably worth taking. I mean, Guardiola thinks it is, but they'll they'll if they finalise Laporte, that'll be four players that seem to have horrendous injury records. So. It could go one of either way. If they're injured all the time, then obviously they're not going to be very... Well, <laughs> they're not going to be any use to anyone. But if they're not, then they are terrific players on their day. I'm not going to deny it. Gundogan's a solid, solid signing if he's fit. And uh, yeah, it just makes City that little bit stronger. Same as Laporte if they do get him. But as for Gundogan, that's obviously confirmed. Another one is uh, Dortmund have signed Bartra, Mark Bartra, for €8 million, Euros, his release close. Um... I don't, I don't really know too much about him, but apparently he's quite error-prone in La Liga and uh, a lot of Barca fans aren't really too bothered that he's gone. So, you know, if Dortmund think they can do a job, then fair enough. And the other, one, the other big one is obviously Mats Hummels to Bayern Munich, who seemingly get all of Borussia Dortmund's players, apart from Marco Royce, who said he would never go to Bayern Munich. So we'll see if he upholds what he said he has for three, four years. So I don't see why he wouldn't. And now we're on to rumours. Now, this could be... This could go into the roundup section very soon. If it does, because I'm a Man United fan, I'll do an extra video when they officially sign. But the first one is Zlatan Ibrahimovic, as I'm sure everyone knows. Sky Sports News uh, say we've basically almost concluded a one-year deal for Zlatan. He's playing Wales right now as uh, I actually record this video. But that would just be terrific. It's a marquee signing. It's experience. It's arrogance. It's everything we need at Manchester United. He's a Cantona-esque striker who just doesn't give a shit about anything. He's very arrogant and we need that back at Manchester United. We, we've we lacked it. We've been too too kind, I suppose. Like You look throughout our team, we've got like players like Juan Mata and Herrera. All of these players that uh, seem very, very you know, good-willed. They're good people in real life, but on the pitch, you need a, you need someone who's going to you know, just not give a shit, who's got that arrogance, who's got that self-confidence, that belief. And Zlatan is that striker. He's also world-class. Yes, he's played for PSG for the last four years, but people saying he's old, his last season for PSG was his best statistically. He scored 50 goals in 51 games. And yes, it's only League One, but still, he was in League One for four years, and last year was his best, and he's 34. 
it's a risk, of course. He hasn't played in the Premier League. But it's a risk worth taking. It really is. W would your club really say no to Zlatan Ibrahimovic? I, d I really don't think he would. Like, he's free. So the worst that's going to happen is that he'll flop, but he's free. So... You know, it's just a big name, and why Why would you not? Like, obviously, rivals are, are getting kind of um, kind of annoyed, I suppose, but that's a good sign. Like, I love when rivals get really annoyed or hate Manchester United because it generally means that we're probably going in the right direction. And uh, there's loads of tweets saying Mourinho's a cunt, Ibrahimovic is a cunt, Man United's a bunch of cunts, so it's a match made in heaven. And I agree, yeah, that's terrific. Yeah, I bring back the hate. That's what I love. Manchester United are the most hated team in the on the world. I can't even say it. On the planet. And um, usually when that happens, we're, we're close to winning. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. The next player is Eric Bailey, who's linked to us. Uh, he's a, I was going to say a striker. He's a centre-back for Villarreal. 22. He's a six foot two, and he's very strong. And he's good in the air. He's a typical Mourinho buy. And obviously Sky Sports are showing that little mistake he had against Fernando Torres. He's still raw. Of course he's going to make mistakes. And I don't know too much about him. Obviously this is all that I've read. But La Liga experts like Graham Hunter, uh, Gillian Belog. I can't say his name, honestly. Someone needs to tell me how to say his name. But you know who I mean. The Spanish La Liga experts say... Exactly what I said. He's a raw talent. But there is certainly... Uh, talent in there there's there's a lot of potential with this guy and some are comparing him to the likes of Kurt Zuma a player that could be similar to him and Mourinho bought him so I, I think it's a typical Mourinho buy it really is he's pacey as well so we'll see what happens the fee reported there's a lot of different fees but roughly what I'm gathering is 15 to 20 million euros slash pounds up front with another 15 million euros slash pounds as add-ons if he hits his potential so it seems like a typical Man United buy to be honest somewhat like we will give more money if they actually perform which I think is what happens across a lot of football now so yeah it's it's roughly 15 to 20 million up front but it could rise to 30 million now we'll move on to some other clubs. Obviously, Jamie Vardy, it might be confirmed later today to Arsenal. At least Arsenal are spending. They, they've got a striker, they've got a CDM, and it's Vardy who's obviously had a wonder season for Leicester. And obviously the big talking points, is he a one-season wonder? Is he right for Arsenal? I'm pretty sure Arsenal fans are, are delighted that they're signing a striker, most of them. And uh, rightly so, because they've went a, a number of windows without actually strengthening. So at least they're trying. Um, if, if he fails, he fails, but it, it is a striker who did score over 20 goals last season in the Premier League. I'm not exactly sure how many, but I think he was second highest goal scorer. And obviously he was with league champions Leicester, so it's well worth a punt. But the, the two things that everyone is saying, uh, if you're not an Arsenal fan, and it's fair enough to be honest... Will he suit Arsenal's style of play because they like intricacy? I can't even say in intricity, intricacy. I can't even say it. basically intricate play. They like that. They like passing it around. Vardy's very, very good on the counter attack when he's got a lot of space or when he's just relying on instinct. And um, he might not get a lot of opportunities like that. But can he change his play style? We'll have to wait and see. He's very, very pacey, obviously. And if given space, he can burst in the box. And we've seen the number of penalties that he manages to get. Sometimes by diving. Sometimes by actually getting uh, brought down by the by the uh, opposing defender. He's got a lot of different attributes to his game. And we'll see what happens. The fee is £22 million, Which I think Leicester have done very well to get. He's uh, he's 28. That is, that is about to hit his prime. Fair enough. Um, and he's had one exceptional season so 22 million I think is a fair price but we'll see what happens I'm gonna delay you know actual um, opinions until I see him if I'm wrong like I, I do think it won't work that's my initial opinion but if I'm wrong I'm wrong and I might well be but they've signed a striker they've signed a CDM so Arsenal for once are spending and I'm sure their fans are utterly delayed that should be confirmed later today now there's other rumours, uh, I heard a rumour that Juan Mata is being targeted by West Ham. Now, this is believable, West Ham have put bids in for Lacazette, for Baca, they've been rejected. And uh, they are trying to build, um, because of their new stadium, they're trying to build a formidable team to go alongside the likes of Paye, etc. So we'll see what happens with that, uh, whether there's any solid evidence. I mean, Sky Sports say that uh, Jose Mourinho 
is uh, considering selling Juan Mata and Daly Blind. We'll see. Daly Blind, I don't think so. I think he'll just be a rotational player and he won't be played at centre-back. He'll be played at CDM slash left-back. But we'll see what happens. As for Juan Mata, he's linked to West Ham. Giorgio, uh, Jorginho Wijnaldum is linked to Everton and Southampton. He was Newcastle's top scorer last season with 11 goals. But as a lot of Newcastle fans will tell you, he tailored away from January onwards. So... Um, obviously he had that wonder game where he scored four I can't remember who against and on his day is very very good but Everton and Southampton seemingly are scouting him and he wants to return to the Premier League because obviously Newcastle got relegated so we'll see what developments that is Ronald Koeman obviously is soon to be appointed Everton manager which is a complete shock uh, I think I mean, if didn't have new owners, they'll have a lot more transfer budget, but they're a similar team to Southampton at the minute. It seems like a very sidewards move, which, you know, Louis van Gaal was his mentor, and we know how much Louis van Gaal likes sideways movement, so I suppose it's rubbed off a bit on Ronald Koeman, but uh, now, in all honesty, uh, I think the reason he would go there is because he's promised long-term plans. He saw them, big transfer budgets, new owners, he sees potential. But I think it's a bit harsh on Southampton, to be fair, because he's done a good job for them. And, uh, yeah, we'll see what happens with them. I'm not sure who they'll get. Maybe uh, there's rumours of De Boer. Um, but we'll see. And th there's a few other ones that I'm trying to think. Uh, apparently, Schweinsteiger might be um, sold by Mourinho, but there's no um, rumour clubs at the minute where he could potentially join. So we'll see what happens with that one. Uh, I'm missing a couple, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. If... Ngalo Kante does go, there's rumours that uh, Leicester want to replace him with Wanyama. And they're also linked to Slamani to replace Vardy. So th this is what I predicted, I, I think I put it on Twitter. If I didn't, I was talking to my mates about this. And with Leicester, I said that, well, I thought Vardy would stay. I thought Mahrez and Kante would leave. But I thought the thing that would screw Leicester up is spending big money on big players instead of relying on their scouts that managed to find hidden gems like Mahrez, like Kante. Now they're going for bigger players, obviously, because they've got the money. They won the Premier League. They want to try and get as high as they possibly can. And they're going after Slomani and Wanyama, who will be relatively expensive. I think combined, probably 30 to 40 million for the pair. Maybe slightly cheaper. We'll see what happens. But we'll see, we'll see how Leicester go, especially if they lose Vardy, which it looks likely. If they lose Kante, which again looks likely. If his release close is 18 million, There'll be a whole host of clubs after him. Uh, Mares, will he go because the other two have gone? We'll have to wait and see. But I generally, at the minute, especially if they lose those three players, I can't see Leicester getting even in the top 10 with the competition that we have in the Premier League. The, the amount of money that's going to be spent, the managers coming in, Guardiola, Mourinho, Conte, Wenger actually spending for once. You know, there's a whole host of other ones. Jürgen Klopp, uh, Ronald Koeman to Everton. Uh, we'll see what happens with that. There's just so much competition. West Ham spending. So we'll see what happens. But as of now, it looks as though Vardy's set for Arsenal. And we'll see what happens with Kante and Mahrez. But this video has probably been very, very long. And that's because it's episode one. There was a lot to cover. I'll try and make this daily. So obviously, they'll be probably four or five minutes long, depending on how many rumours and how many confirmed deals are done per day. Let me know what you think, though. Your thoughts in the comments. I always read them. Sometimes I'm a bit late, but I'll try and get back to doing it on the same day. So hopefully, you have enjoyed. Subscribe if you haven't already. Like the video. And yeah, peace.